is Focus with Jack Connell. Good evening, I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome to this month's edition of Focus. This month, we're having a conversation with new Rapid City Mayor Jason Solomon. A little background on him before we get going. Solomon was elected the new mayor of Rapid City in June, edging Laura Armstrong by 269 votes to become Rapid City's 59th mayor, taking over for Steve Allender, who opted to not run again. Born in Texas, moved to Rapid City in the 80s when he was 11 years old. He is a U.S. Air Force veteran, worked at a Fortune 500 Black Hills Federal Credit Union, served as executive pastor of Fountain Spring Church here in Rapid City and first elected to the city council back in 2016. First of all, thanks for coming up. Congratulations Thank on you, the uh, win as mayor. Going back to the beginning of all of this, you're on city council. What made you decide that, okay, I'm going to make a run for mayor? Yeah, if I'm being honest, if, if 2019 Mayor Allender had not run, I probably would have seriously considered it then. Uh, but he chose to run again and I did not and my term was up on council. And I had made the career change where I, I moved over to the church from the credit union. And that was what made it a difficult decision this next go around because I was loving what I was doing, believed in the work that we were doing. Uh, but honestly, when you're looking ahead at the future, the opportunities that we have, the challenges that we have, just really felt that nudge that, you know, you need to put your name in the hat. The people will decide, but put your name in the hat. Uh, offer a fresh vision for the future and see what happens. Was there anything that put you over the edge? You said it was a tough decision. It was. You think, I'm going to do it. You know, I spent a lot of time praying about it, obviously, and talking to my wife, Gwen. Uh, we talked about it quite a bit. Uh, quite frankly, the sheer amount of people encouraging me to run. It was one of those things that everywhere I was going, people were asking me about it and whether I would consider it and that I should do it. And so I think when you get kind of confirmation you know in your heart and you have your family support and you have friends and supporters around the community saying this is something you should do uh, I felt you know what let's give it a try and so there there I did and February 15th I made the announcement and here we are today now you're about a month into the job now how is that learning curve going adjusting from the city council to the mayor's seat it's you know it's a little different it I've been in the legislative branch uh, for six years and now I'm in the executive branch. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit different knowing, okay, my job isn't to make laws. Uh, my job is to enforce the law. And I think that that kind of adjustment is, you know, a little bit different, but it's been going very well. We have great people at City Hall, uh, great support around the community. And, you know, so far I, I call it uh, doing a cannonball into the deep end. There's no tippy toeing into this. You just dive right in. And thankfully I know how to swim and, and <laughs> Here we are now, a month in. Uh, anything surprise you about what you've seen in that first month as mayor? The volume of people reaching out, uh, I really appreciate it. Much of it's you know positive. Obviously, there's a lot of challenges in our community, and there's one mayor, and so that's why you have a staff. And I think that that's the important thing to know is that that's been the really big surprising thing for me is just just how many people want to to connect and meet about whatever the issues or opportunities are. I think that's exciting in a way because a lot of folks from out of town are looking to do business in Rapid City and they've been paying uh, very close attention to this election. I have found out because they're reaching out to me. And uh, I've made it very clear uh, some of my priorities such as, you know, I, I put a word out that I want this to be a regional retail hub uh, in the area and that I want high volume retailers. And so, well, suddenly you're starting to have those conversations. So it's interesting how when you say something, it catches the ears of others, maybe not even locally, but beyond, and they just start asking questions. So that's what's that's been interesting, uh, making sure I use my words uh, wisely and well. <laughs> uh, they can come back to haunt you quickly if you use well, the wrong ones. Yeah. Uh, mayor Allender, a long stint as mayor. How did that transition go? How did he help you ease into this job? Yeah, I appreciate him. Uh, you know, the minute I, I, I won uh, prior to the recount, he was instantly, let's have lunch. And uh, we had lunch and I had a list of questions. He had a list of things to cover. And we did that several times where we had uh, good meetings, good back and forth. I think, I think in that sense, he really wanted to transition well, uh, not just because he loves Rapid City, which he does, but I think uh, to serve as an example of how you transfer from one leader to the next. Uh, I admire that, I respect that. 
you know, he and I, we agreed on many things. There are other things we didn't always agree on, but at the end of the day, uh, we're both professionals, both love Rapid City and want what's best for it. So how are you approaching your four-year term here now? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm approaching going in, uh, trying, you know, setting goals and expectations. So when you first, you know, you're the CEO of a pretty significant organization, you know, almost 900 employees work for the city. So you have a lot of things. We, we cover a lot of ground. You can't be the expert at everything. So you have to really come in and assess the culture and make sure that you have, that you're all moving in the same direction and that everybody knows your expectations and vice versa. That's a big part of the job. Also building relationships outside the city making sure that as we tackle some of the goals and objectives that we have, uh, that we have relationships formed to help us meet it. Now you talk about uh, that many city employees. What's your management style? How do you see yourself yeah. interacting and dealing with all those different factions that are in, in city government? Yeah, well, I learned long ago uh, in leadership that you get the culture that you define, you model, and you allow. So you first have to define, hey, here's, here's how we're going to work. And that was kind of my first day, at least with my direct reports, we'll continue to push that message out to the rest of the employees. But here's what I expect, how I expect us to operate with the community and the public, but also with one another. Uh, also, so that you gotta define that culture too. You gotta model that as a leader, uh, that you say, not only am I expecting this from you, but there's, here's how I operate as well. And then three, what you allow, meaning, or what you tolerate. Uh, I'm sure you've been a parent, I've been a parent that, uh, and it's one of those big leadership lessons that if you allow poor behavior, let's say when they're young, when they're teenagers, it doesn't get any better. And when they're adults, what kind of things will they be? Likewise, in, in most instances, it's about the behavior that you see and re you reward that, you celebrate positive behavior and you get more of that. So that's a big part of my, my leadership style. You know, I, I, I like to think of myself as a servant leader. Uh, I believe in uh, being driven by values and vision and being very, try to be as real as I can that people would know who I am and what I'm about. You may not always agree with me, whether you work for me in the city or I work for you as a community, but you, I at least want you to know, I may not always agree with Jason, but I know what he's about. And that's been uh, the big thing because I think right now, trust is at an all time low across all sorts of institutions, not just government, but you see it in media, you see it in other industries as well. Well, the way you combat that, I think, is just with telling the truth and being honest about who you are and what you're hoping to accomplish. Uh, now, talking about is a, is a city leader right now, how do you get the trust of the parks guys and the streets guys yeah. and the, the waste management guys? How do you get out? Do you try to get out there and see what all these guys are doing? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a big part of it. It's hard to build trust if they don't know you. So one of my objectives in the coming months is to, to do kind of a, a tour of all these various entities around the city, whether it's streets, you know, the landfill, parks, PD, fire department. Um, we have, boy, a whole host of folks doing amazing work. Uh, just this past Monday, I went out to the landfill and I wasn't able to visit with everybody. Monday was a busy day at the landfill uh, when I was there, but uh, I'm gonna go back so that I can kind of connect with them. If they get to know who I am, they know what I'm about. I can tell you on July 4th, I was stationed with the police department all day in our emergency operations center. I got to visit with quite a few uh, police officers and I think they, they like that. They got to know me and know that I'm there with them. And that's how you establish trust is building relationships. And so it's gonna take some time to get through everybody, uh, just like the whole community. The more they get to know you, I think that's where you build trust. And so it's incumbent upon me to get out of my office, get out of City Hall, make sure that I'm, I'm visiting with folks who do the day-to-day -day work of the city. Now you talk about lack of trust in government. How do you get the trust of the people as a whole? Yeah, I think that that is about transparency. Uh, I think it's about saying, this is why I'm here with you right now, by the way. I'm doing mm -hmm. a 30 minute segment with you so that folks at home can say, here's, here's the mayor talking to Jack Cottle and you're a trusted voice and you're able to ask me questions. So I think trying to be as honest as I can with folks about what's going on. And, and I think that we have done a pretty good job with that in Rapid City, but I, you know, wherever we can do better, uh, I hope to do that. But uh, if the more folks know about what's happening in city government, the more they're going to trust it. They may not always like it, mm -hmm. they may not always agree with it, but at least they can trust it. 
No matter what you do, somebody's going to be mad at you. Well, that's that's true. <laughs> that is the bottom line. All right, we got to take a break. We'll continue our conversation with New Rep City Mayor Jason Solomon when we return with this month's edition of Focus. I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus. This month we are talking to new Rapid City Mayor Jason Solomon. Again, thank you for coming up. Uh, city has, like any city, some uh, big challenges to deal with. One of them is the homeless mm -hmm. situation in town. That is no easy solution to that, something that's not going away anytime soon. What's the city's role in dealing with the homeless population? Well, you know, the city uh, is responsible for enforcing law. I mean, the bottom line. I, I think though that the one thing the city can do is really start to organize efforts to make sure that we're doing things in a productive way. Um, you know, the more I'm getting into this, we're gonna to have to tackle this issue uh, pretty well. I, I, I don't believe it's the city's responsibility to provide a feeding center or warming shelter. I think there are other nonprofits and churches and other agencies that are doing that and doing it well. So the question I always ask is who's doing that with proven results and make sure that the community, hopefully the community will empower those groups to do it even better. Uh, so when you're talking about that issue, I think that's big. But two, I, the issue behind the issue is what we need to talk about. And uh, not just with homelessness, but we see this across the board. I, I really believe that the significant driver of a lot of this is drug and alcohol abuse and mental health issues. And I think that's really the issue. That's, there's issues for that too. There's issues behind that issue as well. Those are deep, deeper than a government can do. That's the heart and the home. And a lot of things go into that. But in terms of what our focus could be on, uh, I think we need to look at how we get better treatment. Uh, West River for people who are suffering from addiction, uh, who are suffering from mental health issues and make sure that we have good help available to them. I know there are some folks doing quite a bit, but I think we need more uh, regionally, not just in Rapid City. Now, when you have homeless people out on the streets, the streets of downtown, how does the city get involved in that? Well, you enforce the law. So for example, one of the things I talk about is no public camping. We, we, we have to, to, to not allow tent cities in our parks or sleeping on our streets. And the reason isn't to be not compassionate to those who are living in those conditions. Obviously, we don't want that for anybody. But the thing is to allow people to, to sleep in our parks or in the public, they are often victimized. We've seen that uh, when I've done ride-alongs with the police department and our mobile medic, uh, you will see someone passed out and, and folks will say, why are you moving them? That You should just let them be. Well, there's a group right over there who's ready to victimize them. And I care enough about, too much about this one person to just let them stay there. Not only that, you want, it, you want it to be safe for the rest of the residents in Rapid City. So I think making sure that it's harder to be homeless in Rapid City, meaning there's clear pathways. If you are in that situation and you're homeless, that there are clear pathways for you to get back on your feet. So whether it's a temporary shelter at the Cornerstone Rescue Mission, if you're battling addiction uh, and and you're suffering at night, we have the Care Campus, there's great organizations like Volunteers of America, a lot of entities, One Heart, a lot of entities doing a lot of work, but making sure that there's pathways for those folks who want help to get out of it. So there are great folks who find themselves in difficult situations and we wanna help them, but there's a difference, Jack, between helping those who won't help themselves and those who can't help themselves. Those who can't, you know, that's, that's the tough. Those who won't, that's a whole different situation, meaning they're able to get out of that situation, but they refuse to because they like the lifestyle. That's where a lot of our challenges are today. Uh, it's obviously an emotional issue for a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. Uh, there's been controversy over feeds for the homeless down at the Banshell Memorial Park. Where do you stand on that? Well, I would prefer they be in the designated areas or that we do it the right way with permitting process. I, I do. My, my opinion is that there's a way to do, you know, you know, to, like the band shell, there's a way to reserve that. And the way the rest of the community has to do it, I think everybody should play by the same rules. Uh, but I got a list of every day where multiple um, meal opportunities are for people and no one's going hungry in Rapid City. Every day there are a handful of meals being provided in Rapid City all over the place. So that's one, day, one evening a week on a Friday that's, that's one 
group, but that's one of a number of groups. So there are, there are entities set up for that. So if you want to go to Fork Real Cafe or the Cornerstone Rescue Mission, um, there are churches doing things. There are various entities uh, serving meals all over the place. Um, there are plenty of food opportunities. So, uh, but in terms of your question, I, I think everybody should play by the rules. So if you want to reserve uh, you know, park space or whatever, contact the parks department and that way uh, you can set it up. But there's a lot of opportunities for food. Nobody's going hungry. Uh, a lot of people see a real racial divide in the city. Big protest a day into your term uh, on July 4th. A lot of that directed at the city's police department. How do you bridge that racial divide here in Rapid City? Well, I think we want to treat each other with respect regardless of our backgrounds. Uh, it's not just racial divides. We divide up on anything right now. It doesn't matter left, right, tall, short, you know, uh, racial backgrounds. But I do think that making sure that first of all, we set we, we state what's very true. And what's true is everybody's life matters, uh, that we're all created equal. And if, I mean, that, that is, it's a founding principle of this nation. It's a founding principle of my belief system. So I think that's always good to remind people where we start, that, that no group is different or better than the other. Um, we all have value, worth, and potential. I think building relationships is going to be key. Uh, you know, it's going to take uh, not just your leaders, but it's going to take everyday people having having friends who might be different than them I have I have great friends who are are Native American for example and I, I have a great deal of respect for the Lakota culture and all that they especially the traditional values that they have I think it's a it's pretty amazing um, so I think when you show that respect and that mutual respect uh, that is significant um, so I think that's a big part when you're talking about race relations I, th I think that's a big part of it um, but it's, it's much bigger, much bigger than one person, uh, but I think it starts with respect. So how do you feel like, how do you make everybody feel like they're included and they're listened to? Well, I think when they're, when they're representative, you know, I, for example, I'd love to see more Native Americans run for office. I think that, that that's a great way to be involved, uh, to make sure that, that there are leaders that, that are able to speak on behalf of Native issues and that, you know, they're listened to. I think that's, significant of course they themselves you know may be leaders at various points so one of our greatest mayors of all time art lacroix uh native american leader it's we have great great amazing people and so when when you have that kind of when you're including people in conversations i think that's that's important and all people quite frankly not just racially but all all across the board um i think it's important that you recognize you're in a community with a lot of different opinions and, and so you're trying to do your best to, to, to listen, uh, make decisions on them uh, in accordance with, you know, for in my sake, I, I have vision and values, so I'm gonna lead by that. I don't, you know, again, I don't hide that. Uh, but that's where I find a lot of common ground with folks. All right, we gotta take another break. We'll All right. continue our conversation with the Raptini Mayor. Jason Solomon. Jason Solomon. I'm <laughs> keep, I'm, my mind keeps going back to Steve Allender. It's been a long time. We'll continue that when we continue with this month's edition of Focus. I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, having a conversation with new Rapid City Mayor Jason Solomon. Uh, looking at the business climate here in Rapid City now, how do you look at that and what has to happen? What can the city do to try to make that grow here? Well, I think the best thing, you, uh, first of all, I don't think you focus on growth. I think you focus on your roots. And if you have strong roots, the growth will happen. So uh, right now, one of my emphasis is that we get better before bigger, meaning let's take care of what we have. The growth will happen. If, if you are developing great talent through our school system, uh, then you're going to have a great workforce. And that's naturally going to draw uh, entities here to grow business or uh, help the ones that are already here thrive. I think that's big. Making sure that we remain business friendly, uh, that we're reasonable in our regulations. I think that, that we're inviting and welcoming to new opportunities, that we leverage the talent that we're producing at our universities in Western Dakota, that looking at the, everything that's going on in and around Ellsworth, uh, I think leveraging that, I think those are significant. Uh, diversifying our economy, uh, we still, people don't realize the agricultural industry still is a main driver of our economy. That is significant. We know about tourism and what it brings. Uh, that's significant. But we want to make sure we're diversifying our economy because that'll help us be resilient moving forward. 
Now, you won the election with less than 50 percent of the vote. That was yeah. a big conversation all along the way. Should there be runoff elections? Uh, the city council takes that to its second reading at the next meeting. You said you're for that. That's right. Uh, why is that? Well, I think it's only fair that the majority, 50% uh, plus one, choose their leaders, especially at the mayor level, but I think also at the council level. Uh, it gives you the mandate that you need. It gives you uh, the support, and it, and it makes sure that that person, that the majority of the city, the majority of the voters are behind what they're doing. Now, I feel confident uh, that I have majority support. I can tell you a lot, of, a lot of folks who may not have voted for me have reached out. I mean, a lot of them have reached out and said, we're really glad that you, that you won. And so, you know, I thought while it was still fresh in people's minds, I thought it was important for us to address that. And it would be, you know, the incumbent's advantage to leave it as it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I thought it was only fair. Let's let's take care of this. Do it the right way. Uh, that way, you know, in the future, we can have confidence uh, that that the majority of Rapid City is behind this person. So, I think you know we split it up five ways in this last election for mayor at least, and I think folks across the board are pretty supportive of it. That's why the council unanimously uh, approved the first reading. Now, we talked about some of the challenges facing the city as you look. What makes you optimistic? What makes you feeling good about what you see in Rapid City right now? Well, there's no place like Rapid City. And the thing about to make Rapid City, how do, here's a big question. How do you make the most of the opportunities that you have, but keep what makes you special? Because I am uninterested in just becoming another average generic city. But what makes us special? So one of the things that makes us special, it's a safe place to raise a family. It's a great place to grow a business. We have a lot of opportunity to enjoy life. If we ever lose those things, nothing else really matters. You and I live here for a reason. The viewers at home live here for a reason. I never want to get rid of that reason. It's a special place. If it's a special place and we're able to maintain that, then opportunity is going to come. The right opportunities that are great for us. And that's what I love about Rapid City. I love the community spirit. Uh, you see it not only uh, you know in the summertime at festivals and in the parks and those sorts of things, but when the chips are down, Winter Storm Atlas, uh, when we almost lost the base, when the 1972 flood, that is the spirit of community that is alive and well in Rapid City. I'm convinced it is still here. And so that is what makes me excited. That's what fires me up about a community because again, I don't want a generic city. I want a special city uh, that people can grow up in and thrive. And that's what it's all about. Rapid City is for people. And when people thrive, uh, a city prospers. Uh, now, your last job before you took this, you were executive pastor of Fountain Springs Church. Yeah. How do those two worlds coincide, or do they coincide when they you get into public office? Yeah. Well, my background's diverse. You know, military, I was a, a vice president at Black Hills Federal Credit Union, was there for quite a, quite a long time, and then uh, the last four years in ministry at Fountain Springs Church, they all play a role into who I am as a leader. So, I make no bones about it. I'm big on faith, family, and freedom. So my faith does drive me, does drive my personal decisions, does drive the way I lead. Uh, that is significant. But also it, it helps me understand that behind the issues that we have are often deeper issues. And that the government's not always the one to address that. We kind of talked about it earlier, but there are a lot of issues people, people are facing all the time. And it makes me realize those are heart issues. And, and, and the more that a family is raising up children, like for example, we've seen the devastating effect of dads not being involved in their kids' lives. Doesn't matter where you come from, it's all across the board. Uh, when, when, they, when dads are more active in children's lives, those children have a better opportunity to thrive. So what can I do? This is my ministry background, thanks. Well, how to, as mayor, can I speak on the issue of fatherlessness and how it impacts our society? I hate to cut you off, yeah. but I have to because we are out of time. All Jason right. Solomon, thank, thank you for you. coming up. Uh, thanks, Jack. Congratulations on your win and uh, good luck in your four years. All right, thank you, sir. At least, as <laughs> Rapid City Man, that'll do it for us. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again the first Sunday night of next month. Good night.